today we have with us uh, Maria Shakir, who is originally from Morocco. Uh, she graduated from Ohio University in 2010 with a master's degree in applied linguistics. She teaches Arabic and French at Valdosta State University in Georgia. She enjoys cooking, baking, and traveling, and is going to uh, teach us today about using um, using food uh, to teach about Arabic uh, language and Arabic culture in the classroom. Uh, if anybody has any questions, um, points of clarification, you can stick those in the chat and I will be monitoring that um, and we'll try to get those questions answered for you. Um, otherwise, we'll have uh, the presentation slides from Maria and then we will move to um, an open Q&A once the presentation is concluded. Um, and once again, like to thank uh, QFI, the Qatar Foundation for uh, supporting this programming. And you can find all of the previous uh, professional development workshop recordings on our website, which I will post um, to the chat in just a few moments. Uh, so go ahead, please, Maria, and take it away. Okay, thank you, Shana. And thank you, Qatar Foundation. I would like to thank Qatar Foundation. Good uh, afternoon, everybody. Marhaba. So today I will talk about teaching Arabic language and culture through food. Why I choose food? Because food is an uh, interesting topic for all of us. And uh, in Arabic culture, food signifies sharing, celebration, and love. The objective of this uh, presentation is to explore different ways of using food to teach language and culture, discover various tools to use in the classroom to teach about food, learn different engaging activities to use in the classroom, discuss different events you can organize with students inside the classroom and outside the classroom, integrate 21st century skills in teaching language and culture through food. Either we teach uh, at college level or in high school or elementary uh, schools, we always think of how we can develop our uh, students' 21st skills. So we are always uh, thinking of uh, making them better at collaboration, communication, using technology, and also we want to raise their awareness uh, of global of global uh, global awareness. I mean, uh, make them aware of other cultures and compare those cultures with their own culture. So you have to, to think of that when you are uh, thinking of activities uh, you wanna include in your classroom when you are teaching about food or sharing recipes with students. So the first uh, module uh, I will talk about is the module of bread. Why I choose bread? Because bread is uh, in Arabic culture has a powerful uh, symbol. Uh, bread is not just uh, mere nutrition. It has a symbol in the culture, in politics, in art, and we will talk about that through the activities we will see today. So the objectives of this module, students will learn where bread comes from. Students will learn how bread is made and eaten in Arabic countries. Students will explore the roles of public ovens in some Arabic countries. Students will explore the artistic and political symbolism of bread. Students will expand their grammatical knowledge of the Arabic root and pattern system. And here I have pictures of some different kinds of bread, recipes I make with my students, uh, like some Moroccan sweet bread, Moroccan semolina bread that uh, Moroccans eat for breakfast. And here a picture of some different kind of bre uh, bread that in Morocco they eat with tagine and some other kind of bread also uh, coming in Morocco for breakfast and pita bread, of course. So what do you know about bread? So I find it's uh, interesting to start by uh, giving some uh, information to students, especially if you are teaching children uh, how the, what's the procedure of like bread from seat to table cycle. And I find this video interesting. Uh, I will share the video with you here. 
اليوم عن الخبز هيا بنا الله ببساطة انظروا إلى سنابل القمح الصفراء الجميلة هل تصدقون أنهم يصنعون الخبز من هذه السنابل؟ نعم في البداية نزرع السنابل ونعتني بها حتى تصبح سنابل ذهبية جميلة ويزرع القمح عادة في فصل الخريف وعندما يصبح جاهزا للحصاد يقوم المزارع بجمعه بواسطة آلة كبيرة تسمى حاصدة القمح ويقوم بأخذ حبوب القمح من السنابل وهذا هو شكل حبوب القمح وبعد جمع الحبوب وتنظيفها يتم نقلها إلى الطاحونة ويقومون هناك بطحنها حتى تتحول إلى طحين أبيض وهذا هو شكل الطحين بعدها تتم عملية عجل الطحين بواسطة آلة ضخمة جدا ويتحول بعدها إلى عجين وتأتي بعدها مرحلة تشكيل العجين وتقطيعه إلى قطع صغيرة انظر So I will stop here. I will not continue uh, with the video just to give you an idea about what the video is about and I will go back to the PowerPoint. So this video, we can use it with children. We can also use it uh, at college level with novice high uh, up to intermediate low. So the activities we can do with this video make students work in pair, in pairs or in groups and discuss some of the questions before they watch the video. Uh, do you eat bread? How do you eat bread? Do you eat it with sandwiches? Uh, where does bread come from? And then while they watch the video, they can answer some comprehension questions like from the video, where does the bread come from? Uh, when do we grow wheat? How is wheat collected? Uh, where do we take wheat after harvest? How is bread baked? And where do they bake? bread. Students can write down between five to six sentences describing this procedure or stages they saw in the video. They can create posters uh, like seed to table cycle or they can create storyboards uh, using Arabic of course uh, and the vocabulary they learn from this video. So I have here uh, a module of like a seed to table cycle, but this is in English and you can switch it to Arabic and uh, do it in a different way. Then next step is let's make bread. So uh, here in this uh, website, Halina, uh, students will learn a recipe about how to make bread. And I will go to the website, Halina. So this is the website. It has different uh, topics and for different levels. So here they have a module about bread. We click here and oops. So before we watch the recipe, I make students watch this video. Uh, in this video, they will see how uh, in Arabic culture, uh, people eat bread, like especially in Morocco with tagine and how they use the three fingers. And then we go over uh, the vocabulary. Let's make bread. So here we have the vocabulary of the ingredients they see here in the pictures. And here they can watch this video. The video is silent. So you don't hear anybody speaking in the video. I 
I will go back to the PowerPoint. So uh, students learn the vocabulary maybe before they watch the video you make a quizlet uh, with the vocabulary and i have a, here a link for the quizlet you can also use like a memory game or any other type of uh, games to introduce the vocabulary students watch the silent video and then they can work in groups and describe the recipe to each other then you can introduce the new pattern of the root ha and ba and za subs bread and students and the instructor can make bread or you can ask uh, students to make the recipe at home and bring it to class if you teach uh, at college level but, but if you teach uh, children maybe you make the bread with them uh, if you have a kitchen in your school so here i have just example of the vocabulary uh, you can introduce some new patterns uh, at college, we teach like patterns and roots. I'm not sure if you teach uh, children, if you teach them the patterns and roots. But you can just introduce like uh, three patterns like here. Fa'al, that's a pattern in Arabic that uh, refers to the occupation. And here we have khabbaz. So you can make students guess the meaning. So it refers to the person who is doing the occupation related to hobs, the root hobs, bread. So it means baker. Fu'ayla is uh, when we refer to the diminutive of a word. And we have here khubayza, which means like a small loaf of bread. And mas'ala, this pattern refers to the place where the action take, takes place, like makhbaza, where the action of making bread, which means bakery. Some extra recipes, uh, I make sometimes students watch these videos at home, Yemeni bread, Egyptian, Moroccan flat bread. There are different types of bread in Morocco and in other countries too, pita bread, Iraqi man bread. I make students watch the video and present the recipes of the different kinds of bread in uh, different Arabic countries. Uh, or you can make them choose one recipe and make it for friends and family and make a video to share with the class or as a, a final project or for cultural portfolio for your class, make students compare the different recipes, make students make brochure of one recipe they prefer. That's another activity you can do. Tell me a story about bread. I like to teach uh, using story approach and sto uh, stories are always attractive even for adults if you teach at college. So this is an interesting story, Al-Faqir Waraghif uh, al Briefly, the story is about a poor man who passed by the communal oven and he smells uh, the smell of the fresh bread. It attracts him. And he asked the person who works at the public oven to give him some bread. He refused. And the poor man, he said he heard the loaf of bread uh, calling him, take me, please take me. <laughs> And he stole the loaf of bread and ran away and sat under a tree and eat it. And after that, they took him to the judge. The judge asked him, why did you steal uh, bread? He said, I didn't steal it. The bread called me. So this is an interesting story. And the judge, uh, he understood why he stole the bread. And he just asked him to work one day at the oven. And he asked the person who we make at the oven to start giving every day uh, 10 loaves of bread as charity. So this uh, story teaches something about the culture, about sharing, and you can do different activities with it. Students study the vocabulary before they uh, listen to you telling them the story. They can act out the words or the vocabulary. While they are listening to the instructor narrating the story, they can use story map they can uh, after that answer some comprehension questions put the events in order draw pictures as the instructor narrates the, uh, the events some post listening activities students act out the story students write the endings students write the story in ebook and i have here an example uh, of what you can do with students I will stop sharing here and go back to so 
how we don't. So here, for example, that's the ebook I talk about. You can ask students to write the story once you talk about it, or uh, you can write down the story and make them read the story like here. And then uh, ask them to put an end different. You don't tell them the end of the story and ask them to like uh, come up with the end of the story. And here, uh, just like story map in Arabic, some comprehension question about the story, put the events in order. Communal ovens. So uh, if you teach at college level, you can make students watch this video at Al Jazeera and do it as a listening activity. About, it's about uh, the communal ovens in the city of Tehran in uh, Tunisia. Students uh, can study the vocabulary you can make a list of the vocabulary and ask students before they watch the video to find out where Taiwan is and find out some important information to share with the class. Then when they are listening to the video, they can complete some exercises in the website. I will show you in a minute. After uh, completing the assignments in Al Jazeera, they can uh, discuss the role of public organs in Tunisia and in Morocco uh, or other countries. But I choose Tunisia and Morocco because I am more familiar with that. Students read uh, an article about uh, communal ovens in Morocco. And I will uh, show you the website in Al Jazeera. So this is uh, the listening activities you can use with your students in Al Jazeera. يتباهون بخبزهم الأصيل الذي يقدمونه هدايا لضيوفهم وزائريهم فهو مميز بأنواعه العديدة ونكهاته المختلفة التي يمتزج فيها زيت الزيتون بالسمن والحبة السوداء و... And here there are different activities you can do with students. True or false. Choose the right answer. Matching. Fill in the blanks and uh, ask students to use the new uh, vocabulary in sentences as a, a writing uh, activity. You can also uh, make them answer some comprehension questions after they watch the video or they practice listening. If you teach uh, children, maybe uh, you will choose not to uh, use that video. You can do it in a different way. Tell me a story about communal ovens. You can use this picture and tell them a story from your childhood. Uh, because when I look at this picture, I remember my childhood in Morocco. Uh, so when we were kids, we were the one who used to take bread to the communal ovens. And this, uh, these kinds of ovens, they are about to disappear right now because now people have their own ovens at home and uh, they don't like to go to the communal ovens, but that shows also a change in the Arab society. Like in the past, the community was important. Now people are more individualistic in a way. So at that time we used to take the bread for, uh, of our family and also of other women in the neighborhood to the communal ovens. 
and we were always worried about like when bread is baked it looks similar and once uh, it happens to me i didn't recognize the bread that my mother made and i took the bread of our neighbors and took it home and uh, my mother was at home to recognize the bread my aunt was there and we had that bread for lunch and uh, after one hour our neighbors they came and they said you took our bread <laughs> but it wasn't a big deal you can tell stories like that uh, to students or to show them the importance of the communal ovens in the past. And they were also a place where people socialize and we knew who is going to get married or going to have a wedding or uh, any kind of events because people use it to, not just to take bread to be baked there, also cookies, pastilla, uh, and all kinds of food they need for uh, big events. Let's think about bread. So in Arabic culture, we think about bread. And if you teach children, maybe you can use this uh, video about them. It's uh, a song for children. And before you make the children listen or watch the video, maybe you can introduce the words by using drawing, flashcards, or really. Yeah? Uh, you can do different activities, choose some words from the song and place them randomly on the whiteboard and put the students in groups or teams and they stand in single file facing the whiteboard. You play the song and when a student hears a word from the song, they grab it, run to the back of their queue and then the next students continues, continue until they finish the song and the winners are the ones with will have uh, most of the words from the song. You can play the song while students draw, and once they finish, they compare their drawing. You can get the lyrics cat and ask students to listen to the song and put them in order. You can also make students listen to the song and change the words that are incorrect. You put some incorrect words in the lyrics. And the last thing you can do is make students sing the song and you can sing with them. For my classes, I use a different song to my mother. Uh, it's a famous poem by the Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. So before uh, we read the poem, students discuss the symbol of bread in Arabic culture. Uh, they study the vocabulary and they do the research on the poet Mahmoud Darwish, who is, he, who is he, to understand the poem. And then we analyze the poem, uh, which uh, starts with I yearn for my mother bread, my mother coffee, and my mother touch. Students discuss the meaning of bread in the poem because the meaning of bread in this poem uh, is deep. And when Mahmoud Darwish, he said, he refers to his mother, the mother in this poem refers to Palestine and bread become a symbol of the Palestinian resistance. After we read the poem and analyze it, students sing the song with the singer Marcel Khalifa, and then they do research on other poems or songs about bread. And there is another uh, song by the same singer Marcel Khalifa, Khobzun Wawrug, Bread and uh, Roses. So these are some uh, activities we do with the poem to my mother. And we analyze the poem. Also, you can use proverbs. Uh, I use some Moroccan proverbs, like uh, the one here, which means the bread made at home is eaten by a foreigner. And ask students to write stories that illustrate the meaning of the proverb. So students come up with different stories to illustrate the proverb. Some, they may uh, take that aspect in the political form, while others, uh, think of it from a different perspective. And then uh, they can watch this video. The video tells a story about the proverb, but it's not in standard Arabic. It's not in Fusha, it's in Amiya from North Africa. Uh, I also explained that we use this proverb in Morocco most of the time. When someone gets married outside of the tribe or the village or the city, and that shows, uh, especially um, 
among older generation and traditional people that they prefer, they don't like someone who is from different uh, region. They prefer marriage to be between people from the same place. And we discuss uh, that also, like what about here? What about uh, in America or in this region here? Are people open to marriage from different uh, places, different cultures? And how uh, people are always scared of uh, the difference. You can ask students to find proverbs with the same meaning in their own languages. Ask students to find other Arabic proverbs related to bread and explain their meaning. If you teach children, maybe you will choose a different proverb, like He was not uh, satisfied with a loaf of bread will be satisfied with half of it. So uh, that uh, just means being ready is not a good thing. And you can ask students to write stories to illustrate the proverb and share their stories with the class. If you teach uh, advanced classes, you can talk about bread and revolutions. Uh, maybe this is not appropriate uh, topic for uh, children. They will not think deeply of it. So I, when I teach advanced classes, most of the time I don't have advanced classes, but if I teach in some uh, uh, summer uh, intense programs, I do this activity. So students do their research uh, about Arab Spring and present the information to the class. They work in groups to describe the picture uh, from the article and analyze the title of the article. Then they discuss some comprehension questions and discuss the relationship between bread uh, and the revolutions. Uh, they may watch also a video about uh, Egypt, how uh, during the period of Arab Spring, Egypt was affected uh, by like uh, the price of bread. Uh, when they rise the price of bread, many poor people were affected and ask students to respond to the article by writing a song or a poem or a short story. And this is the picture. Uh, you can ask students to analyze uh, this child is holding a loaf of bread. What does that mean? Uh, how do we associate bread with the freedom and how some Arab countries they use bread to oppress poor people? We can uh, discuss all these topics. These are some questions you can discuss from the article you will choose. And not just out of spring, you can go back to the uh, French Revolution when Marie Antoinette uh, said, uh, if they don't have bread, let them eat the cake. The next model I will talk about is the model of tea. So students uh, will come to recognize the cultural rituals associated with drinking tea, students will learn new vocabulary to describe different types of tea. They will experience musical arrangement inspired by the drink of tea. Students will learn about the social and artistic role of tea in Arabic culture. Students will learn how to make Moroccan tea. And you can choose any kind of tea uh, you make from your on culture. I just choose Morocco. And these are uh, recent pictures about uh, our tea party at the Arabic club. And here with the TA Halima, she is here with us today. She was making Moroccan tea and explained me to students how we make Moroccan tea. But uh, maybe sometimes it's important to introduce the story of discovering tea. So this video shows the story of discovering tea in China and it's in Arabic uh, and students, uh, they don't need to be advanced to understand this video. It's very simple for intermediate low level. Students watch the video, then you can write some question on the board and make students work in inside outside circle to answer the questions. That will give them chance to work with uh, different uh, partners and to recycle the information from the video. They can work in groups and share the story of the discovery of tea. 
they can work individually and draw pictures while they listen to the narration of the story. And they can do also their research on how tea is prepared in the countries mentioned in the video, such as China, Turkey, Ireland, and Saudi Arabia. Then uh, the next step will be making tea, Moroccan tea. And I use the same website, Halina, which has uh, a module about tea. Let me share with you here the website. So they have a module about tea here in the website. So uh, they have the vocabulary that students need to know. Shay, Atay, Kes, Ibrit, etc. So you can use this vocabulary first and students use the flashcards to study the vocabulary before you start uh, learning about tea. Then I make students watch this video on YouTube about how to make Moroccan tea. Students write down the ingredient and the instructions and I ask them to do their research on the cultural aspect. What is the symbol of tea in Moroccan culture? How do we power tea from high? Why we do that? Uh, and how many cups you have to drink in Morocco? So you have to drink three cups. The first cup is a uh, glass, we say, yes, glass of tea is like sweet as life. The second one is strong as love. And the third one is better as death. And we, they have also to find out who make tea in Morocco, men or women, and the guest or the host. And we discuss that. And then uh, we make tea either in the classroom or in the Arabic club. You can also organize a tea testing event uh, with the tea from different countries, from Egypt, from uh, Mauritania, for example, they make tea in a different way. You can also introduce some uh, herbal tea like anise tea, hibiscus tea, verbena tea in Arabic countries. We drink this kind of tea. So maybe students sometimes they don't like these kinds of tea. They think they are not <laughs> good teas, but you will lose nothing introducing it. What do singing and tea have in common? So we sing about bread, we sing about tea, we sing about food in Arabic culture all the time. <laughs> so uh, this is a song that in Moroccan Darija is in the same website, Halina. So you can use it for intermediate, mid, intermediate, high. First introduce this, the vocabulary of the song because it's in colloquial. Maybe your students are not familiar with the Moroccan Darija. Then you can do different activities once students get familiar with the vocabulary, read the lyrics and discuss what they understand from the song, uh, make students discuss the lyrics and the deep the meaning of them, and then they listen to the song and sing. Students can write a paragraph about the song, write their own song about tea and present it to the class. Students find some other songs about tea and share them with the class. Uh, I know there is an Egyptian song, Tishrabi Ashrab Shay. You can make them compare that with this song. And I will show you here uh, where you find this uh, song in Khalina. Here, Halina Nismani Shay. So, this is the song. Halina 
translation if you don't you are not familiar with Moroccan uh, Darija so basically the song is uh, just about a sweet cup of tea and it also shows like uh, tea is a, a symbol of hospitality in Morocco and there are some rituals about drinking tea there are different kinds of tea tea with amber tea with mint uh, and when you drink tea, you are supposed to spend a lot of time. Uh, I mean, um, not just a few minutes. You have to really socialize and uh, talk from your heart and share your stories with your uh, host. Uh, if you teach uh, children, maybe you choose a different song. So I find this song in YouTube. It's about uh, a little girl singing uh, about tea. She wants to drink tea and her parents, they don't want her to drink tea. But at the end, they will give her a cup of tea. Uh, so this song is appropriate for children. Students watch the video silently and guess the topic of the song. You can make them listen to the song and write down the words they recognize and the words they don't recognize. Uh, make students read the lyrics and go over the meaning of the words they don't understand. Students and the instructors sing the song and act it out. Make students write the song and change the lyrics. Uh, make students write song skits and perform them for the class. Because the girl in the in this video, she was upset. Uh, her mother doesn't want her to drink tea. Her sister doesn't want her to drink tea. Her father doesn't want her to drink tea. So, uh, the idea of making skits out of the song is a good idea. It fits this song. Tea and so uh, if you want to introduce your students to some other dialects, so I find this video interesting. It's in. Uh, uh, Sudanese dialect and uh, you can do that just to introduce a different dialect to your class. Students watch the video silently and describe what they see in the video. Students are introduced to the vocabulary. Uh, you can explain some words uh, from the video. Students listen to the song in the ad and sing. Uh, make students write their own advertising for tea and present it to the class. It could be in Fusha or Amiya, and students can find some other ads and share them with the class. Tea and poetry in Mauritania. So this is a link to an article, maybe for advanced, uh, low advanced med students. If you teach at college, you can ask students to read the article at home and answer some questions and then you have discussion in the class ask them to write a paragraph about the importance of tea in the Mauritanian society and discuss the artistic aspect of tea in Mauritania and then ask students maybe to compare the tea for poets the role of tea for poets versus the role of wine for poets in the pre-islamic uh, society because in the pre-islamic societies uh, poets used to write about wine and uh, used to drink wine but in the islamic uh, mauritanian society poets they uh, write about tea so you can make this comparison and uh, all the poets like they need to sit uh, with friends and family and have make tea and then start saying poems about tea. The module of couscous, so students will learn how couscous is made and eaten in different countries in North Africa. Students will explore the origin of couscous. Students will learn some myths and stories related to couscous and students will make couscous. Here are some uh, 
different pictures about different kinds of couscous. What do you know about couscous? So this video introduced students to the origin of couscous, but before they watch the video, maybe they can do research uh, on uh, couscous. What do you know about couscous? What countries eat couscous? What are the uh, different uh, way of making couscous? Maybe they can share the map uh, of the countries where couscous is eaten more. Introduce the vocabulary uh, that they will hear in the video using Quizlet, flashcards, PowerPoint presentation, or any uh, different way of introducing the vocabulary. You can use Taho to check students' comprehension. You can make students uh, work in inside and outside circle to answer some questions. And uh, you can ask students to make presentations or poster or storyboards to report what they have learned from this video. This video here is about couscous salad, uh, and you can use it for any level, for, uh, novice, mid, novice, high, for children. Maybe before they watch the video, you just make them uh, look at the picture of couscous salad and describe what they see in the picture. Then they watch the video and write down the ingredients. And you can use some games such as Kahoot or with Quizlet to recycle the vocabulary. You can make students work in groups and ask them to describe to each other how to make couscous salad. And you can ask them to make couscous salad and bring it to class and or you make it together. Couscous salad is uh, the easiest recipe in comparison with the other recipes of couscous. Here are different videos you can use with uh, students uh, about how couscous is made in Morocco versus in Tunisia. They made it with the uh, fish uh, or in Egypt, how they made couscous. -y. You can ask students to watch these videos at home and uh, write down the ingredients and the way of preparing couscous in all these countries. You can ask them to uh, write paragraph or two paragraphs about the different ways of making couscous. Uh, you can ask them to do presentations about what they have learned from the videos or to choose one recipe uh, of couscous and make it with their family, friends for cultural portfolio for your class. Or you can ask students to uh, create some comic strips and say which couscous they prefer, like the one uh, I have here. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, here. So, أنا أريد طبق كسكس لحم والخضار مثل في المغرب. أنا أريد طبق كسكس بالدجاج فقط. أنا أفضله بدون لحم مثل في مصر. So you can ask students to uh, create something like this. This is just like a simple way of doing it. Stories about couscous. So uh, here there's a link to a podcast you can use with uh, your students if they are at college advanced level. So students can listen to the podcast at home and present in class what they have learned. Students pick one story. There are different stories in the podcast and write it in the form of a comic strip. Students can work in groups and make skits about the stories. They can compare the stories in the podcast with stories from their own culture. 
uh, for children, you can maybe narrate the stories. Uh, they will not listen to the podcast, so you can be the narrator of the stories and use gestures and pictures to help them understand the meaning. Maybe you can use puppets or you can draw pictures and make students tell the story using their own words. You can also make students create post posters about the stories, make students write songs or poems to retell the stories once you narrate them. Make students compare their stories with stories from their cultural background. And I will share with you uh, briefly one story uh, from the podcast. This is a story uh, from Algeria a long time ago. There were tribes, so there were there was this tribe uh, that was in war with another tribe. And uh, there was a beautiful woman in that tribe. And the king of the tribe that was in war with them, he wants to marry her. Her father refused. So uh, the king, he just came and kidnapped the beautiful woman and took her to her tribe. She was not happy with that and her father was not happy. So the king, he didn't uh, want to uh, force her to love him. So he tried to be nice to her and uh, make anything to make her happy. So he asked her, what do you want? She said, invite my father to stay with us for a month. So he invited her father. And when her father arrived to her, Place, she started making couscous uh, to him every day and send it to him in a basket. And uh, after a month, she said to her husband, uh, my father can go back now to his uh, tribe. But during the whole month, when she used to send couscous in the basket, she used also to send some weapons uh, with it because she found out where the weapons, uh, where the king hide the weapons in the house. So her father, when he went back to his tribe, he had the weapons uh, to attack the king's tribe. And he, that's what he did. And he defeated the king. The king was killed. And the beautiful woman, she, be, she became the queen of the tribe for 18, uh, for 18 years. And from that time, they called couscous uh, the the dish of freedom, tabak al So you can tell that story in a simple uh, way in Arabic to your students and share it with them. You can also work on different things. I just focus on the module, uh, the three module, but you can also work with different things about food like salads and appetizers. So for example, uh, most of the students, they are familiar with tapule and Baba Ghanouj, but I find this uh, video interesting. It introduced them to the origin of tapule and Baba Ghanouj. So the story of Baba Ghanouj, uh, it said like long time ago, uh, in the Middle East, there was a priest. His name was Baba Ghanouj, and his students, he made the dish of eggplants roasted eggplants with garlic and some spices and give it to him. And the priest, Baba Ranouj, he didn't want to eat by himself. So he gave uh, some of that dish to everybody in the village. And they liked that uh, eggplant and they start calling it Baba Ranouj after the priest. That's where the name came from. So students, they can, uh, before they watch the video, Identify the countries where people eat tabbouleh and baba ghanouj. They can answer some true or false questions or some comprehension questions in Kahoot. Then students can make uh, baba ghanouj and tabbouleh at home and bring it to the class, or you can make it with them. Uh, students can look up information about the origin of some uh, other dishes like fatouche salad or some other dishes from different countries. And these are some examples of true or false uh, questions. Then you can uh, share Baba Ghanouj uh, recipe with students and do different activities. Students learn vocabulary and match the pictures with the words. Students watch the video and write down the ingredients. Students make Baba Ghanouj at home and bring it to the class. 
students search another recipe of baba ganoush and present the ingredients you can also make students uh, sing make, make up a thing about baba ganoush following the model we have here about falafel falafel yuhibbu al falafel You can make them think something like that or come up with their own uh, song. This is just uh, an idea here. And here, like uh, some example of matching games. And uh, here you can use also uh, another website, Aswat Arabia. Uh, I use that for listening activities, so you can use it for the tabbouleh recipe. Students learn the vocabulary before they watch the video. Maybe you can use presentation or pictures. Students watch the video and match the Arabic words with the English words. If they are beginners, students fill in the chart of the ingredients. Students do the research at home on how to prepare the dish and present in the classroom. Students make tabbouleh with the instructor, or if they are adult, you can ask them to make it and bring it to, to the class. Students do their research on the difference between Syrian, Lebanese, and Iraqi tabbouleh. And uh, I will share with you the video in Aswat Arabia. So this is the video. سلطة اليوم تبولي لخمسة أشخاص ثلاثمائة وأربعة وأربعون سعرة حرارية للصحن الواحد. المقادير كالتالي: خسة كاملة، بقدونس أربع بقات أو ضمات، بندورة أو طماطم أربعمائة جرام. أو أربع حبات صغيرة نعناع خمسة عروق ليمونة حامض واحدة برغل ناعم أربعون جراما أو ملعقتان كبيرتان بصلة واحدة صغيرة أو مئة جرام زيت زيتون مئة وخمسون جراما أو ثلاثة أرباع الكوب عصير ليمون حامض مئة جرام أو نصف كوب ملح عشرة جرامات أو ملعقة صغيرة بهار أسود حلو جرام واحد and they have also other recipes here like uh, eggplant salad and they have also fatouche uh, salad i think al fatouche and here i have some uh, example of some uh, moroccan sa sorry moroccan salads i made with my class uh, with my students uh, beet salads uh, orange salad with cinnamon and uh, here tomatoes and cucumbers and onion salads with olive oil you can also work on arabic desserts uh, especially when it's Eid or ramadan with students uh, 
and teach the recipes of baklava. It's easy. I made also this Moroccan dessert it's called Rishbuna or Basbusa. These are some easy recipes you can share with students uh, during Ramadan or Eid. You can also, if you uh, want to work on food based on countries, you can do that. So uh, in the website Halina, they have, for example, Palestinian food. You can maybe work on a module of Palestinian food and then move to Egyptian food, Yemeni food, Sudanese food, Tunisian food. You can do that also. Uh, I choose just like uh, I said, like module of different kind of foods. And uh, sometimes I talk about like Palestinian food and uh, I introduce some Palestinian food. And then we visit the Palestinian restaurants in the region. We just start having this uh, restaurants two years, or I think two years ago. Before that, we used to uh, go to uh, Florida, Jacksonville uh, in a field trip to experience Palestinian or Middle Eastern food. And you can also ask students to look up different dishes and write about them. This about Palestinian food, uh, you can use this with intermediate, high, uh, advanced level as reading assignments, and then you can share the recipe or ask them to make the recipes, or you can make the recipes together. Okay, I'll go back to the PowerPoint. Ideas about what you can do with students uh, about food. You can make students cook some Arabic food and share it with their classmates in the class. You can organize events on campus or at school, such as like Arabic night or Arabic day of, if you teach children, iftar uh, during Ramadan, Eid party, a taste of the Arab world. You can cook with students in the Arabic club. If you have Arabic club at your school, organize field trips to Arabic restaurants in your area, organize tea party on campus, make students create Arabic recipe books, either digital or uh, traditional way, make students make uh, videos of themselves cooking with families or friends as a final uh, project or as part of their cultural portfolio, have a cooking competition at school, maybe between the French or Spanish or other languages they offer at your school. Visit Arab or Middle Eastern festival in your region. Uh, we used to go to Atlanta to uh, go to the Alif Institute festival once a year before COVID, of course. Here are some pictures uh, of events I have with my students on campus. So uh, this is uh, from uh, our visit to Alif Institute two years ago. This, is, this picture is from uh, the French and Arabic night. Uh, the French and Arabic club organized this event the first week of November. And here you can see desserts uh, and basbusa, baklava. This was from a summer program uh, at Midbury. It was Eid and we prepare some Arabic desserts. I have here more pictures from the French and Arabic, uh, sorry, from the French and Arabic nights. And this is uh, Arabic dinner. We prepare uh, some dishes from different countries, me and my students and uh, one of the TAs, Fulbright TAs. So we make Moroccan food and uh, Tajin, uh, Moroccan tea, uh, some Algerian uh, food. I think this is Algerian soup and Algerian burik. And we had also some Saudi students who made some dishes. 
And this is a picture from our field trip to Florida to a restaurant, uh, Libanese restaurants in Florida. This picture from uh, an event we organized with the high school uh, here uh, at Valdosta in Georgia. Uh, the same event here, so students uh, dance in Debka dance. And these are some uh, flyers about some events uh, I organized with my students on campus, Franco-Arabic Film Festival and French and Arabic Night when we cook, uh, Arabic calligraphy and tea. These are some references of what I shared with you. And uh, now I'm ready to answer some questions. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Maria. That was um, very clear um, and uh, very effective and I think provided a lot of resources for, for folks. Um, if anybody has clarifying questions, I know quite a few people said that they enjoyed the presentation and that they got a lot of resources from watching it. Um, and the slides will be posted, of course, with the recorded video um, on the Arabic Teacher Council website um, at the end. So does anyone have um, any questions if you want to raise your hand or um, I've allowed everyone to unmute themselves. So if you do have any questions, you should be able to ask those. It was a very straightforward, very good presentation. I don't think there was a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of confusion or, or anything. So I think it was, yeah, okay. So we're just getting um, lots of thank yous uh, to you, Maria, in the chat. Um, so I think that might, that might wrap it up then. Um, but we have, um, Maria, I can um, share your contact information yes. of course, um, with anyone who, saw, who is part of the Arabic Teacher Council um, and the website where the materials are listed is also where um, new people can sign up. Yes, um, sure. So, okay. Well, thanks everyone so much. I'll put that website um, in the chat uh, one final time. Here we go. Um, that's where the recording will appear. And thank you so much, Maria. And thank you everyone for attending and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Bye. Thank you, you too. Bye.